I'm rolling. Good morning, Mata. Good morning. Thanks for taking time to meet with sure. us today. Uh, can you, let's start by having you describe your position in the district. Okay. Uh, currently, I am an acting assistant superintendent overseeing secondary programs, English learner programs, and dual language program. So you have quite a spread of responsibility there. I do. I do. Um, I really enjoy it, and I am challenged, uh, but I feel pretty successful when my day ends. That's great. One of the things we're trying to do is to understand how Baldwin Park came to be uh, one of the, the top performing districts um, that have high levels of students with uh, English language uh, learning issues, uh, high poverty, mm -hmm. etc. And I believe you became a principal uh, the year that Mr. Skabarna became superintendent, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Can just think back and, and have you seen changes in the, in the way district leadership has operated with the principals at the site level? Yes, I have. Um, when I did become a principal, I did focus very much so on the English learner programs. I really felt that we needed to uh, concentrate on the students uh, being much more productive. Uh, at that time, I remember focusing much more on reclassification. And as we were being trained as principals, that was one of the areas that I remember leadership at that time um, didn't focus too much on. It was pretty much on uh, the students as a, a, a district-wide, but um, eventually, as I finished up my principalship, we were getting closer to focusing much more on uh, English learners and actually students in special education as well. Uh, in, in the role of principal, um, did you feel that you had a, a lot of autonomy or that it was kind of a top-down approach? Don't answer that yet. I just want to get your perspective. So I want to see what changed. Yes, um, when I became a principal and we were under the leadership that we had at that time, um, our superintendent, Mark Scavarna, allowed us to have autonomy as principals. As we were being trained, we would be able to take back the training to our sites and work with our staff, including classified, and we were able to implement what we learned at our own pace and at our own discretion. And so what I did is what I, I um, filtered through, what I was able to take back with me, and again, focused on the areas where my school needed the most help. And that was in the area of English learners and special education. And uh, Mark always came back to our principal meetings and asked us how were things going, what else do we need, uh, who else can we bring in, are the people that are training us appropriate, uh, are they bringing to Baldwin Park what it is that we need in order to be the successful district that we are? So let, let's move now to your, your current role. And, and how would you describe um, your work with the secondary uh, schools and, and the principals, and especially in light of the new strategic plan that the district has in place? Yes, in my new role, I've been in my role now for the past six months, uh, formerly director of special education English learner programs. Uh, currently, I am working with secondary, uh, the secondary programs with secondary principals. I work with the assistant principals. I work with counselors. I work with the resource teachers. I meet with all of them once a month. And what I did when I came in as the uh, assistant superintendent of secondary programs, I evaluated where we were at that time. So back in the spring, I went through all of the secondary classrooms, uh, math classrooms, to see where we were as a math department and what I saw were many different things happening and so as we were moving quickly into Common Core and giving overviews to our school sites at the elementary level, what I saw at the secondary level were things that were really, really well done, very, very good things happening at the secondary level, but what was missing was much more of a focus on uh, our math department. Um, so what I did is, from last year, after I evaluated where we were, this school year, I'm able to work with the principals on uh, much more of a math focus. Uh, actually, we're going to be beginning a math committee to review what path we're gonna be taking for next school year. And I also brought in the director 
from the Los Angeles County Office of Education, the math consultant, to come in and work with us on what that's going to look like, what path we could possibly could take for next school year. Being that we're implementing Common Core as well, uh, that just seems to fit hand in hand. And from there, we're going to be looking at what type of textbooks we're going to be using for the math program for next school year. So uh, much, a lot of rigor. We're working on uh, rigor with the secondary principals and all the four C's. And so we're very much looking forward to implementing, continuing to, continuing to implement um, Common Core for our following school year. Kind of building on that, could, could you talk about how you use data? Yes, so uh, we actually are getting ready to um, review our data a little bit more based on the strategic plan. So when I work with the principals one-on-one, -on -one, we did set up our four goals. So each principal is responsible for two goals, two common goals based on the strategic plan and two individualized goals based on the strategic plan. And the data from the strategic plan, uh, the two areas that we're working on are relevant skills for our students and the second one is rigor. Uh, but the third and fourth goal, we are continuing to work with our advanced placement program data and also our A through D data, data. Because what's happening is we are noticing that there's a disconnect between what the students are, how the students are performing and how the students are uh, taking their, their test. And so we wanna make sure that our students are in line with what we're providing. So what we had to do was rethink what we're providing for our students. So we're having to review what type of A through G program are we offering and what type of AP classes um, are we offering as well. So those are the two areas that we're looking at regarding data and we haven't completed it. Uh, we're in the middle of actually doing that and so I look forward to seeing how we can continue to make Ballum Park um, the successful district that it is. You've talked a lot about um, the academic focus, but uh, when I visit the high schools, I, I see some amazing programs that mm -hmm. are traditionally aren't considered academic. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of those programs and, and uh, the arts, vocational ed, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have quite a few um, programs that do exist that are very uh, successful. Um, we do have uh, at both of the high schools a very um, prominent um, VAPA program, which is a visual and performing arts program. We have won many um, honors, many um, accolades for uh, providing such extra um, classes for our students, areas of which might not have been looked at in the past. We do have a great film um, a counselor at one of the high schools that's working on film with the students and we are producing um, quite a few different um, means and uh, areas where the the students are going to be able to uh, show what they what they know in their performance <laughs> sorry about that all right you, you might as well come on in and I'm then we're sorry. gonna no worries we'll just take that one from the top the, the visual arts part okay <clears throat> sorry <laughs> yeah. Every morning my eyes water. So go ahead and talk about the unique uh, visual arts program that you have. I think we were I was talking about the filming. filming. Yeah. Um, so we do have a production every year. Actually, I believe it's the last few years that the schools are getting together to um, show what type of uh, uh, students that we can. I'm sorry, I didn't make any next up on that sheet kind of messed me up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> regarding filming, yes, we do have a production that is going to be happening in the spring. This is going to be our, I believe, our third annual uh, production where our students are able to show what they've learned and they produce small films. Um, and this school year, we're going to be inviting the other high schools so that they can join this high school in showing um, these films and their talents. Also, we are definitely moving in the area for um, in our electives, we're reviewing uh, during our curriculum council, we're reviewing the different electives that our students um, don't have access to. Uh, one of the high schools is looking into robotics. Uh, another one of the high schools is looking into the culinary arts. And I do believe that 
those are types of programs that we do, don't currently have that will allow for our students to make better selections and to get them a little bit more um, connected to what Common Core is asking for in the future. Mata, one of the, the themes that I've heard is I've talked with the cabinet members is one about the parent engagement. Yes. Uh, and it's kind of, I think it's been put something like we're moving from parent involvement to parent engagement. Can you talk about that, uh, not only in light of your current position, but as you work with the English language learners? Yes, um, I definitely feel that we are moving much more from a parent involvement perspective uh, parent volunteer perspective and into a parent engagement perspective. Uh, we do have parents that are involved with our leadership and I do oversee our District English Learner Advisory Committee, which is our DLAC, and we are moving our parents into becoming much more engaged. They are the ones that are actually handling the meetings now. Uh, we teach them how to be leaders. We teach them how to stay focused on uh, the topics and to um, ensure that the parents in our community are receiving what they need to have in order to be in the know, especially in the area of, of course, Common Core and especially in the area of high expectations. So what we do is we take the DLAC responsibilities and we embed um, all of the things that we're working on. For example, Common Core, we just finished having a meeting last week and we had a Common Core presentation with them. And so our parents are hearing this and they're wondering how can I get involved? So we teach them at the district level and then the parents take it back to their school sites which then becomes the site level, which is our English Language Advisory Committee. And so I give them homework at each, uh, at each meeting, and then they take it back and work with the principals. And so they are then meeting with their site leadership and during their meetings, and they provide that training that we provide to them, they provide those to, at the school sites as well. You're in charge of secondary. How, Sorry. How, how do you work with the uh, elementary folks to ensure that the kids have a kind of a seamless transition as they move from elementary to secondary? Oh, excuse me. Um, working with the secondary, um, what we're doing is at the principal meetings, the assistant superintendent of elementary and I are putting together our professional development so that we present to the principals something that's much more aligned, vertically aligned K-12. We began that at the last principal meeting where we put the principals in groups of vertical teaming based on the feeder schools to the high schools. And so what we're doing is we're ensuring that what the high school principals don't know, they are receiving now from the elementary principals and from their middle school feeder schools. And vice versa, what the elementary schools principals don't know is what the high school principals are able to share with them as far as how the students are doing once they reach high school. These are areas that we feel that we have not touched upon in the past as a whole. We have different um, school sites that are doing this on their own but not as district-wide and so as we completed this at the last principal meeting, we were, um, it was well received and our principals wanted more. So we're going to now produce at every principal meeting, we're going to continue with our professional development in the area of vertical um, meeting and vertical teaming. Mm -hmm. is, is there uh, anything else that you would like to, to add that you think it's really important for us to know? Well, I've been in this district for many years and um, I started out as an instructional aide and I'm currently now working as administrators overseeing our secondary pro programs here in Baldwin Park. I do feel that Baldwin Park has come a long way. Having been a student in this district, I do know what I used to receive and I do now appreciate what we're offering to the students, much different than I ever learned or I ever was um, ever had when I was a student. So I do believe we're well on our way to be having more, much, many more challenges, but much more as a successful district. I do appreciate the leadership that we have regarding our, uh, our superintendent. He does give us the latitude to be able to work independently, but at the same time to work as a team. And I do believe that we have some great ideas. 
uh, that I don't think many other districts are doing. We are not afraid in Baldwin Park to take on a challenge. We do whatever we can to stay in the forefront, and I do continue to believe that we're going to continue to be as successful as we are in the future. Great soundbite. That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. So <laughs> go ahead. I just have one question for you, but if you need to. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Because you're, you're giving us sort of the structural left brain background, you know, which we kind of have to have, but I'm trying to, when you make a movie, you, you know what I mean, it can't just be all this, sure. like a PowerPoint thing. So that was a great sound bite. But the thing I want to know is since you were a student here and, and then um, taught here, and then Mark came in, because this is really about what happened once Mark showed up 11 years ago or whatever. What would you say was, from your perspective, the most, the most critical thing, difference maker that really got everybody moving in the right direction? What was the most important thing that happened? Mm. So do you want me to start as a principal? When yeah. I was principal? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> as I became principal of an elementary school um, nine years ago, I did feel that I wasn't sure if I was the person that was capable enough to take on an elementary school. And when the superintendent came to see me as his first year, he told me, you're not only capable, but you're going to do the job and you're going to do it well and you're going to have all of the support that you need. So let's get to it. And so he gave me that confidence. He gave me that strength to know that I was able to take on that challenge. And when he asked me to then take on my next challenge, which was to be a director of student achievement, he told me, you're going to be the director of student achievement. And the same thing, you will do well, you will get support, and uh, you can do it. And so at that time, I did feel over those four years when I was a principal that the superintendent knew that uh, good talent, great talent. And so I do feel that he has supported us administrators um, since he has been a superintendent. And I do feel that he knows good talent when he sees it. And so I feel very honored and blessed that he has selected me to work along his side, especially now as an assistant superintendent. And then, you know, for people outside of Baldwin Park, you know, you, you guys have done really well that West Ed study. Is there is there one thing you could speak to that you would say was the reason why you're closing the achievement gap? Yes, um, being able to see what we have done through Ed Trust West, um, and again through the vision of our superintendent and our school board, I'm able to see the fruits of our labor, especially with students of color and the English Learner Program. When I did become a director here in Baldwin Park overseeing the English Learner Program, we did research the ways that students are be were being reclassified. And to go through reclassification here in the state of California, you need to follow the criteria. And the criteria was based on the state test, based on the CELT test, based on teacher recommendation and parent opinion. And when I surveyed all of the surrounding districts, um, our criteria was way too un un unattainable. So what I did was through our leadership was um, I was able to change that criteria to ensure that our students were um, able to reach the criteria, number one, and then number two, after they uh, finished being reclassified, they were able to be uh, monitored for two years through successfully through the programs that we were offering, especially in the areas of intervention. And so as we saw the students being reclassified and we're monitoring them, our percentage went up and our percentage of students being successful after reclassification maintained. And so we felt that we did uh, great by that, by ensuring that our students were moving forward, uh, again, especially in the English Learner Program. Okay. 